If you simply learn to eat right and exercise, your whole life, and I mean your whole life, will be a lot better. Hey guys, welcome back to 5 nothing under nothing .com. I am Fug It. And it stands for the fittest underdog guru using intelligent tactics. Guys, let me tell you, my whole life has been made better by eating right and exercising. And it didn't start off that way. You know, you grow up, you're modeling uh, eating behaviors and, and things from culture, from family, um, from modeling the people around you, you know, what's put before you on the dinner table at breakfast, you know, if you're having um, cereal and like, you know, sugary pastries and things like that, you're eating a lunch out of either, um, you know, some type of a, a processed meat or peanut butter and jelly sandwich, bag of chips, you know, you're drinking soda every night, having, um, you know, some kind of carry out, or TV dinners, things like that, you start to just get used to it. You start to think this is normal. And then based on your genetics, you know, um, maybe you're, you know, an ectomorph, endomorph, or mesomorph. Maybe, you know, you're just naturally muscular. Maybe you're naturally a little bit on the plumper side. And maybe you're just really skinny and you can eat everything and burn it all off. Uh, to which everybody around you wants to choke you, as you well know, if you're and um, ectomorph watching this, right? So, you know, you don't really think about it until you start to have a little bit more self-awareness, you know, in your adolescence and you start to see that you're going to be stereotyped, you're gonna be judged. And it's just, you know, people's way of making sense of the world, trying to figure out where everything belongs, right? Putting categories uh, and, and to sum it up. Now it can be taken to the extreme and it of course can be, um, you know, there's teasing and bullying and, and you know, really um, emotionally damaging talk by people. But at the end of the day, in its simplest form, it's just a way to make sense of the world and how you fit into it. So, you know, you look at all those things and, you know, for me, I learned to eat right by trial and error, you know, just by doing some little things that I knew were better than other things to do. And, you know, it was a process. I didn't have it perfect. I've talked about this before, where I would take, um, I would go to the grocery store, buy a bag of frozen chicken breasts and dump them onto a pizza tray, pizza pan, and I'd turn the oven on to 400 and I would bake it until it looked brown on the outside. So now, not putting any type of um, cooking spray or oil or foil even on the, the pan, I'm sitting there trying to scrape off like baked on chicken breast onto a pan and I just thought it was you know par for the course. It's just what you had to do if you're going to be eating um, this healthy chicken, right? Then I said, I talked about how I would make like a big pot of white rice. And then I would think, oh, this is kind of bland. It needs a little something. So I would dump ketchup on it. So here I have dried out chicken breast with no seasoning at all, right? No vegetables or anything. Then um, a big heaping pile of white rice that was boiled in a pot and maybe drained enough to not be watery, but I would basically put it in a bowl and with the ketchup, it would almost look like tomato soup. And I would just choke this stuff down. Now, it doesn't sound all that great, but you gotta remember, I would have either like a large pizza, like a meat lovers type pizza, or I would have, um, you know, double cheeseburger, double Whopper, double quarter pounder, something like that. Supersize those fries, give me a supersize Coke, and then of course you have to have dessert, right? And if I was really hungry, I'd get two more hamburgers or nuggets, depending on if I wanted a little chicken. Uh, now you compare those types of daily eating habits to that chicken breast dried out and the white rice, and I lost body fat on that white rice and chicken breast. So 
again, it was a better choice. It was what I knew, I did the best with what I knew, and then I continued to learn, you know. Um, you know, before the days of all the earbuds and everyone listening to their own music or being in their own zone in the gym, uh, the gym used to be a lot more social in the 80s and 90s. So, you know, guys would spot each other, they would talk fitness, they would, you know, bounce information off each other about what they would learn. Uh, sometimes there would be, you know, uh, competitive bodybuilders in the gym and, you know, they would talk to you and give you some tips, you know. Um, as a teen, I really appreciated that. You know, they would take the time to, you know, talk to you about your fitness, what you're doing, kind of steer you in the right direction with protein shakes and amino acids and vitamins and all that stuff. So, you know, I would take all of that and I would just absorb all this information I was getting either from them, from bodybuilding magazines, things like that, and start to put it into practice. And I would, you know, study this stuff religiously because I wanted to look better. Uh, feeling better really wasn't an issue. You know, when you're a um, young person, and, you know, you're mid-20s and under, you're not really thinking about, you know, how you feel or having more energy. You have tons of energy. You know, you get in the gym and you just like go at it. You attack the weights. You know, you rock your cardio, whatever you do, and you're burning off a lot of energy. And, you know, as you get older, you know, assuming that you've been exercising for years, you know, you understand the benefits, the endorphin release, the stress relief, um, all of the benefits that come from exercise, you start to really value and cherish them as you get a little bit older. And, you know, uh, the cosmetic look, how you look physically, becomes secondary to how your body feels, you know? You start to see people, if you're um, a lifelong exerciser like myself, and this goes back to like 12 years old when I started um, messing around with um, those Weeder Home uh, barbell kits, um, a DP, uh, that was the brand, uh, uh, air compress rower, you know, things like that, uh, chin up bar, push ups, things like that, writing down the workouts, all that stuff. Um, you know, once you get past, you know, all of that and you get a little bit older and your training routine changes and you deal with, you know, maybe injuries or sickness setbacks, um, seasons where you're not working out as much, whatever it is, because of school or responsibilities, then, you know, again, you start, if you don't exercise for a little while, you begin to miss it because you don't have energy. Uh, a non-exerciser that wants to get started in the gym and, and get exercising will say, you know, if, they, if they're if they procrastinating, they'll say, you know, I don't really have enough energy. I can't go to the gym. But if you've been exercising for a while and you understand how this thing works, you'll say, I don't have enough energy. I need to get to the gym because it will give you energy. It sounds counterintuitive, but it is nonetheless 100% fact. Fact check that, fact checkers. Bunch of fact checkers, yeah. But uh, it's true that, you know, a lot of times our work is not physical in nature, right? A lot of it is automated or it is done on a computer and you're in a seated position. You're not burning a lot of energy, but you are using a lot of brain power, you know, hopefully, or maybe some of you are, some of you aren't, some of it's mindless work. Um, but, you know, really you're not using your body the way it was designed to be used. It's designed to move in many different directions and to be under some stress. You know, your muscles need to be challenged. You know, bone density improves from fitness. Uh, the biggest thing is your overall sense of well-being. You physically feel better. You need that release. You need to be challenged. And only then will the body get stronger and grow and look better. And grow meaning musculature, you know. Um, you'll actually take up less space because muscle is more dense than fat. So it doesn't weigh more, as people say, but it's, uh, it's dense. So, you know, pound for pound, a, mus a pound of muscle, a pound of fat is a pound. But how much space does a pound of muscle take up versus how much fat space a pound of fat takes up? That's the situation. So um, if you were to look at volume, you know, for like spatial, the size of like, say, you know, if you fill a milk jug with muscle versus a milk jug with fat, 
you know, that, that muscle, pound of muscle is going to weigh more, or that jug of muscle is going to weigh more. That was a really crappy example, but, you know, I'll think of, uh, I'll have um, recorder's remorse after, and I'll have, it'll come right to me what that was, but you guys get the point, I hope. The, um, the thing that is really interesting, though, that you might intuitively know on some level, but your whole life gets better when you're in better shape, when you're healthier, you'll have the energy, you'll have self-confidence, you'll have self-awareness and more patience because you are you know that you're going to be getting to the gym and you're going to be attacking weights, you're going to be doing the machines, whatever you're going to do, um, it's going to leave you with an overall sense of well-being, a sense of self-control, a sense of accomplishment and achievement and that just becomes like a rolling stone. It starts momentum in the direction for everything in your life, whether it is making relationships better, attracting um, a partner, um, the way other people communicate with you, the way they treat you, the respect you'll get when you're a person who takes care of themselves. If you know you get all mad guys that the girl likes the guy with abs and this and that, it's not that it's just the physical look right? It's not just the sex appeal, perhaps, but it's the, um, it's like the rich guy, right? It's like, oh, she's a gold digger because he's a rich guy. No, it might just show that he's fiscally responsible. It shows a sign of intelligence and it's a, it provides her with a sense of security because this guy is accomplished. He's disciplined enough to go out and make a success of himself. And the same is true in the gym. If you're a guy that takes care of your body, you eat better, then you will look better, you will feel better, you'll have more confidence, and it goes on and on. So, you know, it's like a domino effect. And the rest of your life does get better. I know mine did. My self-confidence went through the ceiling. And um, I know it will for you too, it always does. Um, so, you know, you know what to do, and now you just need to do what you know. You know, get in the gym or get outside. You know, it's uh, summertime now. Get some exercise, you know, get in the pool. Whatever it is that you do, go for walks. Anything you do is going to improve your overall health. It's gonna help boost your immune system for obvious reasons. You wanna be able to fight off viruses. And, you know, at the end of the day, everybody wants to look better naked. Whether you're the only one who sees it, your dog, or another human being. Like, share, subscribe.